Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video we will continue with the last basic ideas before we jump into coding. So hope you enjoy it. Without further ado, let's begin. So you have seen on our basic page the meta tag that describes the document encoding type. HTML used to be restricted to ASCII characters. ASCII is abbreviated from American Standard Code for Information Interchange. It is a character encoding standard for electronic communication. ASCII codes represent text in computers, telecommunications, equipment, and other devices. It contains English letters, numericals, and some basic symbols. Now, HTML5 uses Unicode, which is a superset of ASCII. It has all ASCII characters and more. It is compatible with existing browsers and editors, except the old ones. Browsers that do not support Unicode will interpret the ASCII portion of the document. In HTML, UTF-8 is the recommended character encoding for all web documents. It is considered the default encoding for HTML5 documents and is widely adopted for several reasons. Universal character support. HTML documents can contain text in multiple languages and scripts, including characters from various writing systems and special symbols. UTF-8 can represent all these characters, making it suitable for creating web content with global reach. Backward compatibility. As mentioned earlier, UTF-8 is backward compatible with ASCII, which is the most widely used character encoding for English and many other languages. This compatibility ensures that existing ASCII-based documents can be safely converted to UTF-8 without any loss of data. Standard recommendation. The World Wide Web Consortium, W3C, the organization responsible for developing web standards, recommends using UTF-8 as the character encoding for HTML documents. Following this recommendation ensures consistency and interoperability across different platforms and users and browsers. Browser and platform support. Virtually all modern web browsers and operating systems fully support UTF-8. Using UTF-8 in HTML ensures that your web content will be correctly displayed on various devices and platforms. Avoiding encoding issues. By using UTF-8, you can avoid encoding related problems, such as incorrect character display or text corruption, especially when dealing with non-ASCII characters. UTF-8 guarantees that the characters in your HTML document will be rendered accurately and consistently. To specify that your HTML document document uses UTF-8 encoding, include the following meta tag within the head section of your HTML element, which is the meta car set UTF-8. This meta tag informs the browser that the HTML content is encoded using UTF-8, allowing it to correctly interpret and display the characters in the document using this meta tag is considered best practice for modern HTML documents to ensure proper handling of text in different languages and writing systems. Now you have seen that we can leave spaces as much as we can on the code between the elements and the content, but when the browser renders HTML it collapses extra spaces and tabs into a single space and either converts, returns, and line feeds into a single space. Browsers do not entirely ignore spaces in HTML code. However, they do treat consecutive spaces, including tabs, new lines, and multiple spaces as a single space when rendering the content. This behavior is known as collapsing white spaces. The reason 
behind this behavior is defined in the HTML specification, and it serves a practical purpose. The primary goal is to ensure that the layout of the HTML content is consistent and predictable across different browsers and platforms. Here are the key points to understand about collapsing white space in HTML. Consecutive spaces. When there are multiple spaces in the HTML code, the browser will collapse them into a single space. For example, the paragraph element that contains its sentence hello world will be rendered as hello world with a single space between hello and world. Leading and trailing spaces, spaces at the beginning or end of a line are not ignored. They are preserved in the rendering. However, if they occur inside HTML tags, for example, the paragraph element, the spaces are collapsed as described in point one. Line breaks and tabs are treated as a space and are collapsed just like regular spaces. For instance, the following code, the paragraph element that contains the sentence line one, line two, will be rendered as line one, line two with a single space between the lines. Entity. If you need to insert multiple consecutive spaces without them collapsing, you can use the non-breaking space entity. This entity prevents the space from collapsing and each non-breaking space entity will be treated as an individual space. Now here is an example. The element paragraph contains the hello world sentence. I will be adding three non-breaking space entity. As you can see on the browser, it has left a space between the hello and the world. In situations where precise spacing is essential, you can also use CSS to control the layout more precisely. For instance, using the white space property, you can set to the desired spacing behavior, which I will be explaining in another video. So in summary, collapsing white spaces in HTML is a standard behavior to ensure consistent rendering across browsers and platforms. Platforms. While it may lead to some confusion in certain cases, there are ways to work around it when more precise control over spacing is necessary. Pages are more alive when you add images, videos, and of course links. These types of files are simply referenced within the page. Browsers render image and video files using built-in support for various image and video formats. Here is how browsers handle rendering for image and video files. Image rendering File formats Browsers support various image formats such as JPEG, PNG, GIF, and SVG, and more. Each format has its strengths and is suitable for different use cases. For example, JPEG is commonly used for photographs due to its good compression and quality balance, while PNG is often used for images with transparency. Processing. When a web page contains an image tag, the browser fetches the image file specified in the source attribute of the tag. After downloading the image, the browser decodes the image file format, decompresses the image data, and renders it on the web page at the specified dimensions. Video rendering. File formats. Browsers support a range of video formats, including MP4, WebM, and OGG. Each format has its advantages and is suitable for different browser and device combinations. For example, the MP4 H.264 is widely supported across various browsers and platforms, while WebM and OGG are preferred for open source and royalty-free use usage. Processing. When a web page contains video element, the browser reloads the video file specified in the source attribute of the tag. It then uses the appropriate video decoder based on the format support of the browser. To decode the video data and render it on the web page, the browser handles video playback, including controls like play, pause, volume, etc. In both cases, the 
rendering process may involve additional steps like scaling, cropping, and handling transparency for images. For videos, the browser handles playback controls, buffering, seeking, and other aspects of video playback. It is important to consider that not all browsers support the same set of image and video formats. Therefore, for better cross-browser compatibility, web developers often provide multiple formats of the same media using the picture element or source elements within the video and image tags. This way, the browser can choose the appropriate format based on its capabilities, ensuring that users can view the media regardless of their browsers and devices. If there is a kind of file that do not render, you will need to give extra information about the file with a plugin or to trigger a warning and then to guide the users on how to download a plugin that users don't have. HTML5 attempts to mitigate many of these issues by introducing native media playback in the browser through elements like audio and video. Like any document, a web page has a file name that identifies itself to the users and the browser. In order to create a proper file name that will help in many ways, Ways, these are a few tips that will help you create a correct file. First, it is better to use lowercase file names. It will help you to free you from errors while typing and linking. Separate words with dashes. Do not include spaces in your file name. Use the dashes to separate your words. There are names that use underscores, but it is not recommended because browsers prefer dashes. Use the proper extension HTML file extensions are .htm or .html. The latter one is more recommended. If you save your file as a .txt, it will display the code. URLs can be either absolute or relative. In HTML, an absolute URL, Uniform Resource Locator, is a complete web address that provides the full path to a resource on the internet. It includes all necessary information information to locate the resource regardless of the current context or location of the web page. Absolute URLs consist of multiple components such as the protocol HTTP or HTTPS, the domain name for example, example.com, the port number which is optional, the path to the specific file or resource on the server, and any query parameters. Here is the basic structure of a an absolute URL. Now let's break down each component. Protocol. This indicates the method or protocol used to access the resource. Common examples include HTTP for regular web pages and HTTPS for secure encrypted connections. Domain. This is the unique name that identifies the website or server where the resource is hosted. It can be an IP address or a human readable domain name. Port which is optional. If the resource is served on a non-standard port, it is specified here. Standard web traffic typically uses port 80 for HTTP and port 443 for HTTPS. Path. This refers to the file path on the server where the resource is located. It describes the hierarchical structure of folders or directories leading to the specific file or resource. Query parameters. Optional. These are additional data or parameters appended to the URL, usually for passing information to the server or web application. Query parameters are separated from the base URL by a question mark and are in the form of key value pairs. Here is an example of an absolute URL. In the example, the protocol we have is the HTTPS. The domain is the example.com. The port is the 8080. The path is the path forward slash to forward slash resource forward slash page dot HTML. Query parameters, which are the parameters that are after the question mark. We have 
have the language English and page equals two. When a browser encounters an absolute URL, it directly fetches the specified resource from the provided address, regardless of the current page's location. A relative URL is a web address that specifies the location of a resource relative to the current page's URL or the current location within the website's directory structure. Unlike absolute URLs which provides a complete path, starting from the domain relative URLs are shorter and more concise as they assume a starting point based on the current context. Relative URLs are useful when linking to resources within the same website or when you want to refer to resources relative to the current page. They offer flexibility, especially when the website's domain or directory structure changes, as long as the relative relationship between the current page and the linked resource remains the same. Relative URLs can take different forms depending on the resource's location relative to the current page. Relative URL without a path reference to the same page. As you can see in this example, the link points to an anchor with the ID section 2 within the same page. Relative URL with a path reference to a page in the same directory. Here the link points to a file name page2.html in the same directory as the current page. Relative URL with parent directory reference to a page in a parent directory. This link points to a file named page3.html located in the parent directory that is one level above the current directory. Relative URL with subdirectory reference to a page in a subdirectory. This link points to a file named page4.html located inside a subdirectory within the current directory. Relative URLs are especially handy when developing and maintaining websites as they allow for easy relocation and organization of files and directories without needing to update all the links in the HTML code. However, it's important to be cautious with relative URLs when moving or restructuring a website to ensure that the links still resolve to the correct resources. We have reached the end of today's video. Thank you all for watching and hope to see you all on the next video.